All right, guys, welcome. Got a big episode here for you to really give you an edge over the competition. Fantasy football advice, 10 tips to win your league. And I should say dominate your league because this advice is outside of the box. It's practical and it will work. And I've also linked an article here below. You can come back. This is evergreen content for you guys to come back, to reference it, to go back and say, hey, I need that tip. I need that pointer. But if you actually apply this, you get a massive advantage over the competition in fantasy football. All right, guys? Now, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys click the subscribe button and get that 16-round draft solution course below where I give you all the optimal players to draft in each round, sleepers, breakouts, everything you guys need to crush your league. I've linked it below. Now, fantasy football advice, 10 tips to win. Let's get to it. All right, guys, welcome to this show. 10 tips to win fantasy football. Amazing and practical fantasy football advice here for you guys to get the edge in your year-long leagues, right? Let's dive into this. Before we do, if you are new to the channel, make sure you guys click that subscribe button. Hit the subscribe button link below and hit the thumbs up, guys. Really helps the channel, gets us out to more people. Hopefully not your league mates, but I think it'll help a lot of people that are even beginners, start uh, experts, it helps everybody because even experts don't use these ninja hacks to crush your league. So let's dive into 10 tips to win. Fantasy football advice is practical to help you crush your leagues, all right? Uh, let's start this. And again, hit that thumbs up. All right, tip number one. Let's go to this, and it's one of my go-to things that I do to win my leagues, and it's study depth charts. Now, this is probably the most underutilized skill, and it's never talked about. The mainstream just don't talk about studying depth charts. Why is it important? Because by studying depth charts and knowing where your fantasy football player is on that depth chart, that's really going to impact and ripple effect in regards to fantasy points. So if my player is on top of their depth chart, they're going to get more volume, get more opportunity. And the thing is, you got to stay on top of the NFL team depth charts because things change, injuries happen, people move up and down the depth chart based on performance. So it's key to understand the depth chart before going in. I draft, you know, sometimes solely based on depth chart because I really go for those volume getters and I don't mess with players that are not going to be on top of the depth chart, not going to get the volume. And let me give you an example. So if, you know, a lot of people will go for that RB2 on a team because it's a popular name, but he's RB2 to the RB1. I'd rather go for an unknown rookie RB1, for example, that's set to be the RB1 over getting RB, that guy that's in a committee guaranteed. So I'm going for, again, the value at the running back or wide receiver position, whatever it is, and I go for that value, and I know that that person can emerge, okay? Does that make sense? So I'll give you an example. A lot of people last year had Robert Woods. And again, if you listen to this years down the road, because again, I want to make, try to put some evergreen content, but I'll try to update this every single year. But Robert Woods in 2021 was ahead of Cooper Cup. And I said, well, I like Cooper Cup in the fourth round. Cooper Cup crushed it that year in 2021. He was the number one fantasy wide receiver. But a lot of people bought these, you know, two combos. They either had Woods and Cup. And I said, I had Cup. You know, a lot of people went Woods. But Woods completely busted. And I also told people to draft Amon Ross St. Brown, Jamar Chase, and all those guys as value later because they were steals. Because I knew they were going to be the one on the team. So now I had three wide receiver ones on my team with Amon Ra, Jamar Chase, and Cooper Cup. And I avoided Robert Woods because I saw that Cooper Cup would have emerged ahead of him. Long story short, guys, aim high in the depth chart. You will succeed, okay? And I see it with running backs all the time. Get the running backs later that are valued that could be the RB1. So now you've got three or four RB1s on your team if you want robust RB. So study depth chart is tip number one. Tip number two, like I just said, go heavy RB. I cannot express enough how important this is. Some people say zero RB, just draft wide receiver early stupidity because you always get value at wide receiver and there's so many more wide receivers available with running backs there's literally at the time of this recording only eight running backs guys eight running backs that have no committee where they're not going to be affected by the guy behind them so it's imperative it's crucial it's critical guys that you guys get running backs early because there's only x amount of handful guys that are gonna get the volume but also to add you know they get hurt a lot You know, you want that depth on your team and nobody else. It's the most scarce position, period. So you got to go robust RB. This is tip number two. Go heavy RB. Do not sacrifice this. Even in a two-quarterback league, maybe, you know, go running back, then get a quarterback second and always go robust RB. Again, the most scarce position. This is completely, you know, the mainstream completely laugh at this, but it's more and more becoming truth now. But years ago, they say, oh, zero RB. Now they're starting to realize, oh, man, I need those running backs. 
go RB heavy, robust RB, okay? Tip number three on the best fantasy football advice here, wait on drafting a tight end. Guys, I cannot tell you enough. I don't put a lot of weight on the tight end. Usually most leagues start one tight end, maybe a tight end you can flex if you have two. I rarely see leagues where you start two tight ends. So I just get two tight ends, right? I draft two tight ends. And I typically try to get the best value I can after the fifth, sixth, seventh round, okay? So, you know, never invest early on a tight end because typically there's only one or two tight ends that crush it or maybe even three, and there's a significant drop-off. I'm okay with getting those guys that drop off and, you know, those guys later, and I get my 10, 12 points a game. So I'm loading up on running backs early. I'm not wasting on tight end, okay? Even a top tight end that's peeking out is probably like a, you know, equivalent to a top 10 fantasy wide receiver based on points. So, Again, wait on tight end. You're guaranteed to guarantee those 10 points. You should be loading up on running backs early. Wait on tight end. And always, as your backup tight end, get like a rookie or get somebody that's, you know, studying depth charts, right? Tip number one, you got to get those guys that are primed to get that volume, right? You look at their depth chart, like, oh, my God, this is a rookie tight end or he's a second-year tight end. They don't have any wide receivers. Maybe he's going to get some volume. I can get this guy in the 10th round. Get him. Why not, right? You back up. You get two tight ends. One of them is going to definitely hit and get you the, the 10 to 12 points a week. You definitely don't want to spend too early on tight ends because I've seen people spend early on tight ends. Those tight ends end up busting anyway. So do not do it, all right? Tip number four. Tip number four, don't overpay for wide receiver. I'm going to give you an example based on 2021. Amonra St. Brown finished 21st amongst wide receivers compared to A.J. Brown, who was drafted in the second round, who finished uh, 32nd amongst wide receivers, okay? Let me repeat. 2021, A.J. Brown was drafted in the second round. I told you to avoid him. You know, Ryan Tannehill was like 17th or 18th in passing attempts. He didn't throw, he doesn't throw a lot on a run first team with the Titans. And everybody told you, you know, A.J. Brown, A.J. Brown, A.J. Brown, top 10. No, 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 avoid him. And Julio Jones was there and all that stuff. And I told you, get him on our St. Brown, right? Get him late. I'm on our St. Brown, finished 21 amongst wide receivers, 227.3 fantasy points compared to A.J. Brown and finished 32nd with 180.9 fantasy points. So point I'm trying to make is don't overpay for wide receiver. Another example, Cooper Cup. Fourth round ADP, finished first amongst wide receivers, 439.5 PPR fantasy points. And the mainstream analysts had Robert Woods ahead of him. Robert Woods ranked, I waited, got Cooper Cup. Debo Samuel, they had Braden Ayuk ahead of him. I told you, Debo Samuel was a stud. He came on my show. He was on my show. Go back. Uh, I think it was uh, recorded around August, September of 2021. Did a show with Debo Samuel. Okay. Finished third amongst wide receivers. And everybody had Ayuk ahead of him. Let me give you another example. Jalen Waddell finished 13th amongst wide receivers in PPR fantasy points and we beat guys like Chris Godwin, DK Metcalf, CeeDee Lamb in fantasy points. They were all recommended ahead of him. So this is why rankings don't work. This is why this is going to help you guys win your leagues. This is why 16-round draft solution, if you haven't got it, get the 16-round draft solution. I linked it below or head on over to thefantasyfootballcounts.com. This is why you're going to get a competitive edge because everybody follows the consensus rankings. It's not going to help you win. All right, guys? So number four, like I said, don't, don't overpay for wide receivers. <clears throat> you get a ton of value. Number five, balance your roster. Meaning, what do I mean by that? you got to have a balance of guaranteed. Now, there's no guarantees in fantasy football, but you need your fair share of guaranteed players, guys that get the volume high on the depth chart. And then you can roll the dice on Jamar Chase's and Jalen Waddell's or any rookie wide receiver that's coming in that year. And again, I'm using 2021 as an example. Whenever you're listening to this, um, again, this is kind of more like evergreen content, but I'm using examples that every single year there's constantly wide receivers that come in that are rookies or second-year wide receivers that are slept on that come in and emerge that move up the depth chart and get that volume that you get for value. But So you can get those wild cards or even those rookie running backs, right? I took a shot on uh, Najee Harris, who's outside the top 10 of all running back rankings, I said, hey, man, draft him first, second round. I was actually getting him in the second round because people were sleeping on him, but I could have paid easily first round pick. He finished third amongst running backs that year. So balance your roster with, you know, those volatile upside players, those guys that could be the grand slams, and those secure players. And I talk about that in the 16-round draft solution as well and the sneaky seven formula where you get a, you know, in the first seven rounds, you get a solid foundation and then you start taking some risks. I talk all about that in the 16-round draft solution. So balance your rosters, tip number five. Tip number six, guys, common sense here, but add a lot of depth. If you're in a two-quarterback league, get three quarterbacks. If you're in a one-quarterback league, get two quarterbacks. If you're in a two-running back league, get five to six running backs. Sorry, if you're, if you're a two-running back league, most of them are, yeah, five to six running backs. Two to three wide receiver have like seven or eight. Now, I always encourage people to tell their commissioner, if you are a commissioner, 
up those um, bench spots. You want more bench spots, more depth. That's going to give you an advantage if you listen to my content because you know who the sleepers or breakouts are, right? So add a lot of depth, guys. I cannot express to you enough. Always have a backup for a backup plan. It's a belt and suspender theory uh, that I have. You know, add a lot of depth. You'll be very, very happy, right? Tip number seven, study ADPs, average draft positions. This is crucial. And this is where the consensus can shoot will help you in the magazines and the cheap rankings and the copy and paste rankings. Why? Because you know when these players are coming off. So if you've scouted out a guy like Amon or St. Brown, you know he's coming off. Or he, he kind of went undrafted last year by the Kinshipsis, but I'm like, hey, get him in the 10th or, you know, 8th to 10th round. But you'll know what players are coming off, and then you're able to get them before anybody else. So if you see that, you know, for example, you know, 2021, Cooper Cup was valuing the fourth round, you knew he was going to break out, grab him in the third. Once you know the ADPs, you'll better succeed, and you're able to secure the players you want and not have them sniped away in a fantasy football draft, okay? So it's very important and crucial you understand the ADPs and what everyone else is doing, and how you do that is by doing a lot of mock drafts. By doing a lot of mock drafts, you anticipate, guys, anticipate. You got to be sharp. You got to be laser sharp if you want to win. You know, you're going to have a massive advantage over the competition because a lot of people just draft on, you know, consensus rankings. You can use that to your advantage. Know when players are coming off. Know where the breakouts are. Know where the sleepers are and pick them and have the massive advantage over the competition. So study ADP's average draft positions. Tip number eight, we've kind of talked about it in the other ones, but it all comes together here. Think five steps ahead of the competition. I think it was Wayne Gretzky said, skate to where the puck is going to go, not where the puck is. Anticipate, guys. Again, when you're drafting, anticipate where they're coming off. Waiver wire, understand that, you know, if a player is going to break out, you know, you might as well, you know, if you saw him break out, you got to be first to waiver wire. But also, you're thinking ahead that maybe that player was a one-week wonder, so you got to be aware of that, okay? So you're always thinking five steps ahead. You're always looking at what could happen, what the volume count is. Could that guy get injured, right? You're always thinking, oh, that guy got hurt last year. Mm, okay, I'm thinking ahead here. He got hurt last year. Maybe he has a good year this year, or he had a really good year last year. There's probably a chance, I'm thinking ahead, he's probably going to get hurt this year. There's no way he's going to duplicate those numbers. Those were That was an anomaly type year, maybe, you know, Cooper Cup. But again, there is, it's very rare that players have two pinnacle years in a row. Usually injury happens, something happens, the team takes a crap, they lose their O-line, the running back you know, has a bad year because the O-line isn't creating holes. Whatever it is, think five steps ahead is what could be, right? And then kind of draft based on some anticipation, have a backup plan for a backup plan. So that's tip number eight, think five steps ahead of the competition. Tip number nine, very simple here, confidence, guys. You've done the work, you've studied the depth charts. You've looked at the average draft positions. You anticipate. You think five steps ahead. You've loaded up on RBs. You have a backup plan for a backup plan, right? You've added depth. You've done all these things, but you got to be confident in your decision because you've done everything you could possibly do, right? There's only so much you can do, right? I mean, you can't, unless short of going on the field and putting on the fantasy points yourself. So you got to be confident. I cannot express to you enough that you have to be confident, meaning you have to be confident in your decision when you're drafting and confident in your choices and also confident when you're starting and sitting based on matchup, based on opportunity, based on how they've been doing the past week. You've done your research. You've gone all in. So confidence is key and conviction in your team and the players that you draft and how who you're going to start and sit every single week is very important. And that attitude you portray to your league mates every single year. You're confident. You own it. You're, you're good. You've gotten 16-round drafts, which you've done everything you've done. You listen to this podcast. You've subscribed. You know, you're ahead of the Kinshipsis because they're just following mainstream rankings and other podcasts. And I would say 99.9% .9 of other podcasts are just following the mainstream. They play it safe. It's BS, guys. You got to be ahead of the competition. This is how you do it. You got to be confident, okay? And number 10, stay sharp on the waiver wire and follow the news. So you guys got to be on top of the news, injuries, and sharp on the waiver wire. Meaning if you've got first waiver wire, wire priority or whatever, you know, FAA budget is, whatever it is, you are sharp and you're ready with that budget to, you know, to pounce on an opportunity of a, a player that's going to break out. Last year, I got Hunter Renfro, Cornell Patterson. They both had really good years. In 2021, I was able to grab them off the waiver wire. I think it was week one, two, or three. I can't remember. Either way, Renfro had a great year. So did Patterson kind of fell off near the end. But the point is, I got two good players off the wire while other people were sleeping on them. So you got to be sharp on the waiver wire, guys. You really got to be laser, laser sharp on the news as well, following following update on the depth charts, and you're going to have a massive competition over the ever everybody else, right? Massive advantage, all right? Now, there's an article below, Fantasy Football Draft Strategy. Check that out as well below and get that 16-round draft. So you should also subscribe to this podcast because they keep you up to date on this stuff, waiver-wise and all that stuff. Everything is here for you guys on this channel, so do subscribe. Again, Fantasy Football Advice, 10 Tips to Win. 
Uh, again, let's recap here. Study depth charts, go robust RB, wait on drafting a tight end, don't overpay for wide receiver. Tip number five is balance your roster. Remember, get those upside players and the safer players. Add a lot of depth, study average draft positions, think five steps ahead of the competition, maybe even 10 if you want. Be confident and stay sharp on the news and that waiver wire. You will be light years ahead of the competition. And that was one reason why I got into fantasy football advice is because I was really passionate about it, and I still am, and people just weren't giving practical advice. That's why I'm here. I'm here for you guys. I've got your back. Okay, guys, use these tips, apply them, combo them with the 16-round drafts, which will actually give you guys all the research players are drafting each round via video training with notes, everything, guys, there. And make sure you guys subscribe, thumbs up to the video. And remember, go dominate. And, uh, you know, line mentality, that's what it does. That's what. That's how you win, guys. Line mentality, confidence, and conviction. Subscribe, guys. Thanks for being here. I'm out.